What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Atlas Empires video. The game is going to be updated to version 8 of the alpha. We are excited to share all of the changes that have been taking place as there are a ton of them. Make sure you take your time going over all of the details of the game. If you come across any bugs or if you have some suggestions, click on the link in the description to submit either of those. If you are excited for this update and you can't wait to get your hands on it, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Also be sure you are subscribed to our channel so you don't miss any of these videos as soon as they go live. Now let's dive right into the update. Hey, what's going on everyone? I think one of the first changes everyone will notice is that we now have a 3D player avatar. You'll also be able to select from five different modeled avatars that you feel best represent yourself. And you'll be able to select your avatar in the profile submenu. The avatar will follow your every move by either remaining idle, walking, or even running. One of the major changes to the game that I will introduce to you are troop cards. Instead of collecting mercenaries that wander around the map view, players will now collect cards that represent troops that the player can train and use in battle. These cards can be found and collected from loot crates and card dealers. The cards will act just like mercenaries in that players will need to discover each troop's card to be able to train that troop in the barracks. Any more cards of that troop collected will be used to level up the troop in the training grounds. Each individual troop unit will have their own card to be discovered and collected by players. Cards will also have a rarity associated with them. Common cards like the Axeman and Archer will be able to be easily found, but other cards like the Sorceress will be harder to find. Overall, we are a fan of this change. This type of setup should be familiar to most players that might have played other mobile games of a similar genre. All right, so now let's talk a little more about the card dealer that we mentioned earlier. The card dealer is a new NPC that can be found on the map view. Once you find her on the map, she will grant you a random free troop card every 8 hours so long as you're in range to interact with her. We as the players also have an option to receive cards more frequently from her, but it will come at a cost. The card dealer can be found on uniquely designed platforms randomly located in the map view, so while you're out exploring, be sure to keep an eye out for her. As you can tell from these cards, there are a lot of new troops that have been added to the barracks, and we'll go over those now. All of these troops are going to be fully functional in battle, and we'll show you those at the end of the video. The first of which is going to be the Raider. This troop is weak, but fast, and has a preference for resource buildings. The next new unit will be the Battering Ram. This troop is slow, but strong, and has a preference for defensive structures. One thing to note when we were talking about each unit having an attacking preference, that means they will head to that type of building first and start attacking. We will go over more strategy once we get into the battle phase. Next, we have what I think might be my favorite troop, and that is the Sorceress. This troop card can be very difficult to come by, but we can assure you it will be worth having. The Sorceress is functional in battle, but her fireball attack doesn't yet have its visual effects added into the game. The next couple of units are not available for battle quite yet, but you can still collect their cards. And those are the War Elephant and Catapult. We will go into detail on these units once they become available. And finally, a unit for your sentry post has been added, and that would be the sentry guard. These units are deployed from the sentry post, and they will attack enemies that come near it. Once again, we will see how this works once we get into the battle portion of this video. Alright, so the next thing we'll discuss will be citizens and collecting taxes. If we click on our Great Hall menu, you can click on the citizen to claim it. How many you can claim is limited to the number of houses you have, and what level they are. There's also a pretty cool animated scene that comes with it too. Once you have some citizens in your Great Hall, you'll start accumulating taxes and you can collect them from the Great Hall menu. There's also a tax boosting feature which allows you to watch a short ad that will increase the amount of taxes you'll receive. Right now there's no ads to play, but this is where you'll be able to do so when it's available. Alright, so now let's go over some of the changes to buildings. A new defensive structure has been added, and that is walls. You can build these walls anywhere in your base and they'll be used to protect a building or block a path to some buildings from your enemies. A few moments later. There are also a couple more defensive buildings that have been added, and those are a mortar and a barrel rocket. The mortar will lob bombs at enemies, creating splash damage, meaning it can damage multiple targets with one shot. And the barrel rocket, on the other hand, will be able to fire rockets at aerial enemies. We assume that this will come in handy as additional troops are added to the game. And as mentioned earlier, the sentry post is now functional in the battle system with sentry guard units. Let's head on over to the training grounds and look at some of the changes that have been taking place there. You can now see that our troop cards have levels associated to them. We will be able to upgrade them from this menu. 
It is not active yet, but this is a change from the way we train troops in earlier builds. When we click on some of the other buildings, you will see that they now show their name along with their level. The icons have been upgraded as you can see here. Other new structure level artwork and models have been added. One additional note to close out the building section of this upgrade is that the farm has been removed from the game. Let's head back to the map view and look at some outposts. You can click on your outposts to upgrade them now. You can see other outposts in your area as well. As long as you're in range with them, you are able to raid resources from them. Once you raid an outpost, there will be a cooldown timer until you are able to raid it again. In addition to all these other changes, there have been a ton of menu and other graphical upgrades. Buildings like the Great Hall, Barracks, and University have all benefited from these updates. The Loot Crates animation has also been changed and it should be a more smooth and polished animation. Now that we've hit on the majority of the updates, let's find an enemy base that we can raid and show some of the changes that have taken place over there. Overall, the battle engine has definitely been improved. Troop deployment has been polished, as well as new troop mechanics and animations added, and you can now see some of the new troops in action. Here, you can see how some of the units have that target preference we talked about earlier. That is all of the new and updated features for this version of the alpha. There are an amazing number of new items that have been introduced to the update. Please make sure you take the time and test them well. Again, if you would like to leave some feedback for the developers, please do so using the link in the description. There has also been a ton of backend optimizations to the game that we will also add to the description that you can read over. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Atlas Empires videos. That'll be all for today's video. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.